All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about linear power amplifiers and in a particular class A operation. So I've drawn a typical power amplifier at the top here, and you can see we have a transistor that has an output matching network consisting of L1, L2, C1, and C2. Typically, there is a large parasitic capacitance at the drain of the power transistor, CP, and generally, we resonate L1 with CP. The matching network consisting of L2, C1, and C2 is transforming the 50 ohm load into an optimum termination impedance for the power amplifier. So with a class A amplifier, we're going to bias the gate so that the transistor never cuts off. So if we look at this in terms of the voltage swing at the drain of the transistor, we're going to bias it so that the voltage always gets to swing through its full range of operation voltages between VDD, or between 2 VDD and VNE. And this means, of course, that current will always continuously flow in the transistor. Because we have a sinusoidal voltage at the drain of the transistor, we can calculate the output power as P out is equal to VRMS squared over R opt. This is equal to V out peak squared over two times R opt. And we're assuming that V out peak is equal to VDD. Levering, leveraging this information, we can find that the optimum termination impedance, R opt, can be given to us if we know what our supply voltage is, VDD squared, divided by two times our output power. Now, in a class A power amplifier, we always have a DC average current, IDC, and we can find that the DC power consumed is equal to IDC times VDD. And we know that IDC is equal to VDD divided by R opt in the transistor. And so we can find that the power that's consumed by DC is equal to VDD squared divided by R. Now we remember from our prior definition of efficiency that our efficiency is equal to output power divided by PDC, DC power. And hence we can find that our output power is equal to one, or sorry, our efficiency is equal to one half times the ratio of V out over VDD squared. And we can see immediately that the maximum efficiency is equal to 50% for a class A amplifier. To design a class A amplifier or any power amplifier, uh, really, uh, given the output power and VDD, we just have to choose the optimum termination impedance and size the transistor appropriately. Okay, so let's assume that we're given a process that has the mu n Cx product of the transistor equal to 1200 microamps per volt squared, a supply voltage VDD of one volt, and a knee voltage of 0.2 volts. And we want to achieve an output power of 316 milliwatts, or 25 dBm. Given these conditions, we can find R opt as VDD minus VNE squared divided by two times our output power. And if we plug the numbers that I've given, we can find that the R opt would be approximately one ohm. Given this, we can find the DC current would be approximately equal to VDD divided by R opt, which is approximately one volt divided by one ohm or one amp. We can assume that the peak current is 
2 times the DC current. Given this current requirement, we can ask what is the width of a MOS device that would be needed to provide this current? Well, we know the current at the drain for a MOS device in saturation is given by 1 half mu n C ox W over L times VGS minus VTH squared. From this, we can find the W over L ratio that would be required to handle this current. So from this, we can find that the necessary W over L for the transistor in order to, in order to provide the required power with these conditions is about 41,000. This is a very large transistor. And we should point out that this is an optimistic estimate. We left out a lot of things. For instance, we didn't take into account that large devices have large parasitics at their drain, and hence there's a very large current division. And we also didn't take into account losses in the matching network. We're going to examine a few alternatives in the next lecture and also start to look at ways that we might improve the efficiency of the amplifier using the biasing of the amplifier.